So how old are you, Mike? 40. Okay. I know I look 50. <laughs> Not where I was going. Um, wh what would you look like now? I'm going to just pause it. I, I'm guessing that you have good genes. Uh, you eat well, you train very hard, and you're using enough anabolic steroids to fuel a small country. Um, if we subtracted that last one out of the equation, because I don't have a sense of what the relative contribution is, what would you look like if you did everything the same minus the anabolic steroids? Or if you if you run like regular TRT, you were taking 100 milligrams of cypionate a week. How much of a, do you have a sense to quantify how many pounds lighter you would be in terms of total muscle mass? Me personally or the average person? No, you personally. Yeah. I want to get a sense of- Having did... had used steroids before at high doses or not having ever had used them? Oh, good Very question. different answer. Yeah. Good question. Let's do both. I can do both. Yeah. yeah. Let's do both. So let's assume you, n when did you start using high doses of anabolic steroids? When I was 27 years old. Okay. So let's say we go back to 27 years old. And you, we put you on the same path of doing everything you're doing in terms of your training intensity, uh, all of the scientific principles that come into it, et cetera. But you've just, you've never gone down the path of taking mega doses of steroids. And if you've ever taken testosterone, it's literally to bring yeah. total T up to 800 nanograms yeah, per yeah, decimal. Yeah. The, at this body fat, I would probably weigh about 200 pounds. Versus 230. Versus 230, 235. Okay. Um, now 35 I know, pounds that's a of lot, muscle. That's a lot of muscle. Yeah. But I would still be very jacked. I mean, um, before I had ever started taking anabolic steroids, um, I was already, uh, an elite power lifter. I weighed 270 pounds at probably 30 something odd percent body fat, but I probably hit why well, I've dexed myself. Um, in a master's program when I had been totally drug free and I had a hundred and somewhere between 175 and towards the end of my drug free era, close to 185 pounds of fat free mass, uh, for someone who's five, six, like myself, though, if anyone asks, I'm five, nine. Uh -huh. So your FFMI would have been north of 30. Uh, Ooh, not quite, but up there. Yeah. FFMI for folks not familiar with it is um, fat free mass index. So it's total fat free mass in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. Yep. And just for reference, you know, it's pretty hard to be above 25 yeah. without anabolic unlikely. steroids. It's unlikely. Right. So that, that right yeah. there suggests kind of some interesting genetics that you Very. were probably 29 ish. 28, 29. Something. It's easier to do when you're really fat though. Yep. Uh, but uh, I have- But your ALMI uh, it, was probably very high as well, sure, I'm guessing. Sure, sure. I have very elite genetics, not swagger. It's just stating a fact. You know, like uh, anyone who sees this on video will notice that my head is curiously shaped like my um, mastication muscles are absurd. I looked like this before I ever took any steroids. Um, I have a picture of myself on Facebook from the side before for sure I took anything and I was like, holy crap, I, I like I usually wasn't bald back then, but I shaved bald and I was like, yep, there they were, those weird um masticating muscles. And so yeah, I was kind of built for the shit. Mm -hmm. Um but also I got plenty out of steroids, but not as much as some other people. Some people without steroids are not overly jacked, but with steroids, it's a total transformative event. And then when they retire and they come off of steroids, they're like, holy shit, did you're back to mortal sized? How? Whereas other people hmm. come off of steroids and like they keep most of their muscle mass and they're on TRT and they just look so jacked for forever. Huge, huge variation. But for me, steroids did a lot, but nothing crazy. I didn't, I didn't gain 70 pounds of muscle, but I gained, yeah, 30-ish, something like that over 13 years. It's been a while. And so- now the reverse question, which I guess is tomorrow you just decide, you know what, I'm going to keep doing everything I'm doing training wise. I'm going to gradually taper this thing down until I'm just, because at this point you're going to need to be on testosterone for the rest of your life, I assume. I don't have to be. My testicular shrinkage has been zero. My spermatogenesis is seemingly zero. And Some you're people doing, just don't suppress. You're, and, and you're, how many times, how many weeks a year are you completely, completely off any anabolic agent? Zero. And how many years has that been? 13. 
I find it hard to believe you would continue to make testosterone. It's hugely genetically variable. And in addition to that, even if I'm make, not making any now, within several weeks, my, my testosterone production would likely resume. Now, if I had balls the size of capers, yeah, you'd be like, well, it's an uphill battle. Most people can resume normal testosterone production after the cessation of anabolic androgenic steroids, but not all. Maybe like 90, 10. You don't want to be that 10, which is why it's a huge thing for me to say. Don't just start steroids or TRT without a real long, hard think about what the hell you want out of life, especially if you have yet to have children, but want children. Because I know people personally who've done one of two things. I know people who on full steroid cycles during that time, father children, I now call my friends. They're real humans. I can point to and be like, you're a steroid baby. And they're freaky. They're been pissed. I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously doesn't go into the germline cells. The other thing is I know some people who you blasted for a long time cannot have children, tried everything. It's just not in the cards because they're to their spermatogenesis. It's just, it's just gone. Yeah. I don't, I can't imagine it's 90, 10 though, Mike, I cannot imagine that 90% of people that use anabolic steroids for more than two years would be able to resume I may be incorrect testosterone production. I would look into it. I think that most of the um, stuff you hear about the, how the comeback is difficult is from people for whom the comeback is difficult. And having been in the bodybuilding powerlifting space for a long time, most people come off and they're just normal after. Almost everyone else that's come off completely is just normal after. So what multiple, do you think, multiple, back to the original question, if you were to come off today, how much of the, call it the 35? Going down to regular TRT, not super TRT. Correct. You went down to 100 milligrams a week um, or none if you were able to make that on your own. Sure. Um, of the 35 pounds of delta supplemental muscle, how much of it would you keep, you think? Probably about half. Yeah. So in other words, there is a difference between the muscle you gained versus the muscle you never had. Huge. Which is why if you have a natural body building federation that allows you to uh, compete. After you've used steroids. It is a it's not fair. of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me back that up. If that's the explicit rule of the federation, I don't like that I call it a natural federation. I respect every athlete in it. I think it's wonderful that they're doing what they're doing. And in a sense, it's a very different category. So it's cool. If I was making a natural bodybuilding federation myself, you would have to sign paperwork that says I've never used anabolic steroids because the literature we have now on how much muscle you gain and keep forever is unequivocal. We even have mechanistic data on how it happens. Your satellite cells that are incorporated into your musculature, which are kind of dormant and then they get in and then they grow big. We have no reason to believe they ever leave. Um, it's like, you know, living your, letting your aunt come live with you for a few weeks and I'm like, where's Aunt Linda's here for forever. <laughs> Here's our children. It's like that. So having done higher doses of androgens ever for weeks or longer on end can give you a higher level of muscularity, especially, well, actually only if you've gone beyond your natural limit. People generally can gain only so much naturally and only so much on steroids. Uh, steroids are not unlimited for gains. If you were going to ever have 160 pounds of fat-free mass and you went from 150 to 160 with steroids, but you could have gotten there and it would take you three times longer without steroids, then the inherent advantage you don't have because you just got there faster. But if you got to 180 on steroids and then you quit all the steroids and now you're back down to 170, you could walk around and maintain that 170 on a normal secretion of testosterone or normal TRT. You would have never been able to do that without the steroids. So it's a permanent advantage. If you've ever been hypermuscular from steroids, you will probably never be as small as you would have normally been ever again. And that's a big deal. Very, very big deal in Olympic sports because you can just kind of hide out. Don't get into the doping pool, crank it, get into the doping pool. You drug free, but you have muscle. It'll never leave you. That's a massive advantage. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. Not that anyone ever does that. <laughs>